Number 57. A coin is dropped from a hot air balloon that is 300 meters above the ground and rising at 10 meters per second upward. For the coin, find, letter A, the maximum height reached. So let's stop there and let's just draw a little picture. Okay, here's the ground. Here's the hot air balloon. Um, right, it looks more like a tree. Anyway, whatever. Anyway, um, so um, you know, there's a there's a coin in this in this hot air balloon, okay? And it says that the coin is basically going to be 300 meters above the ground at the moment. Okay, so let's just draw in the 300 meters. Now it just says the hot air balloon is 300 meters, right? It doesn't say specifically for the coin, but we have to make that assumption. 300 meters. All right. Um, so it says now for the, and by the way, the balloon itself is traveling upwards, right? The balloon itself is traveling upwards. Now, if the balloon is traveling upwards, by the way, what does that mean the coin is traveling? Where's the coin traveling if it's on the balloon? It's also traveling upwards, right? At 10 meters per second. That's like saying your car is moving at 60 miles an hour. And uh, I ask you, well, what's your speed? You, not the car, but you. You wouldn't tell me zero. Well, actually, you, you should tell me. Well, relative to what, Andrew? Relative to the ground, I'm traveling at 60 meter miles per hour, um, or whatever unit I used before, because I can't remember the past five seconds. Um, or uh, you might say, well, relative to the car, Andrew, I'm not traveling, I'm not going anywhere. My velocity is actually zero. So it is a good point. Um, we are looking at this coin from the perspective of an observer being on the ground. All right. Our frame of reference is the reference of Earth here. So therefore, um, you know, from the ground uh, on Earth. So this coin is also moving upwards. Let me put it in a different color. All right, it's moving upwards with a velocity, an initial velocity, essentially, of 10 meters per second. 10 meters per second. All right. And now it says for the coin, find the find the maximum height reach. So basically what's going to happen is it's going to travel up right after it's released. And then at some point in time, it's going to reach some highest point and then travel back down. And it's eventually going to, you know, if it's thrown out over the edge, um, it's eventually going to hit the ground. Okay. So what we need to do is find the high, you know, the total height. It says uh, for the coin, find the maximum height reached. Now, here's the thing, the maximum height relative to what, okay? Uh, relative to the Earth. Now, it doesn't say that anywhere, but that's really what they're asking. So they're asking me to find the total height between the ground and the highest point, okay? So I already know this part in red. This part in red is 300 meters. What I really want to find then is just this piece. What happened there? I just want to find this height now. Okay, now this is, by the way, not to scale. All right, but if I can find now this height or this displacement, then I can basically add whatever value I find here, right, to the 300 and then find the total, okay? So that's really my question. Now, what do I know? I also know the, uh, let's start writing this out. I also know the initial velocity it told us was 10 meters per second. Um, I'm looking for the displacement, okay? It doesn't tell me this, but you have to know that at the highest point, the velocity in the y direction specifically, but this is a free fall problem, is just going directly up and directly down. So there is no x velocity. You'll deal with that in the next chapter. Uh, but you have to know that the final velocity or the velocity at the highest point here, which I'm calling my final point, okay? This is my initial point. And this is my final point. You have to know that the velocity there is zero meters per second. For a split second, it stops okay, at the highest point. Now, the problem's not going to tell you that. You have to know that, all right? Hence why you're doing problems. Also, when this coin is released, there's a force that's acting on the coin. There's a force that's always acting on the coin, okay? The force due to gravity. But once this coin is released from the balloon, that's the only force that's now acting on that coin, okay? Assuming there's no air resistance and stuff. But you have to know that once this coin is in the air, once it's in what we call free fall, the acceleration of that object will be negative 9.80 meters per second squared. You have to know that. Anytime there's an object in the air that's being thrown or whatever, tossed, it's just in the air, you will know the acceleration. Okay? You have to memorize it. Okay, so what I now need to do is figure out what is the displacement. So I'm going to look through these formulas and see if I know, you know, all the variables in one of those equations except for one of the variables. In other words, if I look at equation number four here, I know the final velocity. 
I know the initial velocity. I know the acceleration, but I don't know uh, the displacement. That's what I want. I want to know all the variables except for one because we can solve for that unknown. So now all we have to do is just plug in. Zero is the final velocity. The, init the initial velocity is 10. Don't worry about sig figs here. We'll worry about it at the end. The acceleration there is negative 9.8, and that's multiplied then by my displacement. So this works out to be 100 minus now. That should be about 19.6, right? 9.8 times 2. Oh my goodness, good thing. Okay, negative. So 19.6, and that's my x. And then you're going to add this term on over to the left-hand side, right, to solve, to begin reorganizing, isolating the variable that goes bye-bye. So this is 19.6t. Why, how did the x change to a t, you might be asking? And uh, yeah, that's called a mental fart. Uh, that's what that's called. And uh, just divide out the 19.6 from both sides. Okay. So here we now have 100 divided by that 19.6, and we get 5.102 or so. 5.102. And that's in terms of meters. Now... That is the displacement up here. Like I said, this is not the scale. And uh, this 5.102, all right, we're going to add to the 300 to find the total maximum height that it reached below, you know, above the ground. Okay? That's essentially what they're asking for. The wording isn't the best, but hopefully that'll make sense. So we're going to take the 300 now, 300, you know, meters, add to it now, you know, the 5.102. And this is basically because the the significance, you know, we we when you add here, we don't know anything past the ones place. So we have to stop this addition at the ones place. So this would be 305 meters. That would be the answer. All right, for letter A. So that is letter A. Let's take a look at letter B. It says the position now, okay, the position and velocity four seconds after being released. So um what we're going to do is uh, first we have to interpret right what position means. And position, they just mean basically displacement. Okay, they're asking for the displacement uh, more or less. So, and it's asking for the displacement after. You might say, well, didn't we just solve for displacement? Well, not not exactly, but kind of. Uh, we have to find the displacement of the object four seconds after being released. Okay, so now let me put this in a different color. Let me state some of my knowns and unknowns. I still know that the initial velocity of this coin is gonna be 10 meters per second upwards, so it's positive. I want to find the displacement now, okay? That's a question mark. But I don't know that the final velocity is zero. Why? Because I don't know if it, I don't know if after four seconds it stops up at the top. How do I know it's up here, or it's over here, or it's over here, or it's down here, or maybe it's close to the ground now, right? You don't know the final velocity. So therefore, I cannot use this number anymore. The frame of the problem has changed. For letter B, it's different than letter A. And therefore, what I need to do is I need to remember that, and I have to take that into account. So I don't know the final velocity. What I do know is that the ball is in the air, and we talked about this already, or the coin, whatever the heck it is, it's gonna be negative 9.80 meters per second squared, because anytime an object is in free fall, the acceleration is always negative 9.8. Uh, and they also told us now the time right, that they want us to find this position of. So we also know the T, we also know time, four seconds, okay? So you have to go hunting. Look through your equations. Is there one equation there where you can solve for displacement if you know the initial, the accelerate, the initial velocity that is, acceleration and time? Sure there is, number two, okay? Number two. So the displacement here will equal now the initial velocity times time plus one half times time, uh, times the acceleration times time squared. So the displacement here is going to be 10 meters per second. Now I'm not gonna plug in all the zeros because I'm not gonna have enough space, but that's four seconds for time, one half times negative 9.8 times then the time squared of four squared. And all you have to do now is just simply throw it on into that calculator, okay? We're gonna round all the significant figures at the end here. So this is going to be now 10 times four, plus 0.5 times negative 9.8 times then four squared. So this works out to be now negative, all right, 38.4, 38.4 meters. Now, what does it mean to be negative 38.4 meters? 
All right. All that means is that relative to this starting height right here, relative to the starting height, the balls or the coins position four seconds after it's released will be somewhere below this point. And not only somewhere below the point, that's what the negative sign means, but I know exactly how far below. It's going to be negative or excuse me, it's going to be 38.4 meters below. So I know that the height here between those two now is going to be 38.4 meters. Okay, so the ball is somewhere here. Again, my, my drawing is not the scale, but I do know it's going to be below that uh, the initial release height. Okay, cool. Now let us see. Let's see if we can squeeze that on up here at the top. Uh, we'll try that up at the top uh, left, okay? So let us see. It says the time before it hits the ground. Okay. So again, uh, the, the frame of the problem now is I'm going to use this as my initial point, and this when it hits the ground is my final point. So you have to keep in mind, you know, if this is my initial point and this is my final point, what are some of the things that I know, okay, about the relationship between the initial point and this final point? So I know the initial velocity, first of all, it's still the same. It's the initial velocity which the coin is, you know, moving up at. So that's the 10 meters per second, okay? The time, well, I don't know. That's what it's asking me, okay? The coin is in the air. So I know that the acceleration is negative 9.80 meters per second squared, fair. I also know the displacement. If this is the initial point and this is the final point, what is the displacement or the length between the initial and the final. The length is gonna be 300. Well, what's the sign? Negative 300. Why? Because anytime you start high and end low, the negative, the sign will be negative. Remember that displacement is always the final value minus the initial value. So if the final value, if this is your zero point, okay, because your coordinate system is basically starting at that point, if this is your origin, then the initial height here is technically zero. And then the final, and then the final point all the way down here, I know it's over here, right? And you might say, well, isn't there some X and Y? But remember, I had to curve this because otherwise it doesn't look good. The final point here would be negative 300, right? From this origin, it's going down, right? The negative Y axis, okay? So the final value here would be negative 300. And a negative 300 minus zero is simply negative 300. But that's why it's negative. Okay, anyway. Now, what can we do here? Knowing the variables that I know, I can now use equation number two to solve. Now, this will turn out to be a quadratic. And some of you might not like a quadratic. There's another. There's other ways around this, okay? But the fastest way is to do it this way and have the program in your calculator already programmed in. Take a look at YouTube. Just type in literally, you know, uh, Quadratic program, TI, whatever you got. 83, 84, 89, 9,000 now, whatever they're up to. All right. So uh, all I'm going to do now is say that the displacement here is going to be equal the, to the initial velocity times time plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. Start plugging in your numbers. Negative 300 is going to be equal to the initial velocity of 10 multiplied by time, T. We don't know plus one half times the acceleration, negative 9.8, you gotta watch your signs here, times time squared, okay? What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, okay? So it's gonna be negative 300 is equal to then 10t, 10t minus now, get rid of this little arrow, minus now 4.9, because I'm just taking half of negative 9.8 uh, t squared, okay? Now I know this is gonna work out to be a quadratic. I have a term that's squared. I have a term that is to the first power, right? It has a variable to the first power. And then I have a term that has no variable. So I wanna get it into the a x squared plus b x plus c is equal to zero form. I gotta bring these two terms on over to the left-hand side. All right, so subtract the 10 t from both sides and then add the 4.9 t squared to both sides. All right, that goes. This goes bye bye. That goes bye bye. And what you're left with now is going to be 4.9 t squared minus 10 t minus 300 is equal to zero. Recall that this is your a value. This is your b value, uh, including that negative sign, by the way. And this is your c value, including that negative sign. All right. 
So you can use the quadratic formula if you need. That's the, you know, hopefully, hopefully you have that by now. The negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, but if you don't, like I said, just look that up on YouTube, how to program your calculator. This will be your a value now, the 4.9. So I'll write it here now. I'll write it in a, I'll write it in, I have like no room. I'll write it up here, okay? A will now equal 4.9. B will now equal negative 10. C will now equal negative 300. And let's calculate, okay? So go to my program, execute it. I got 4.9. For A, negative 10 for B, and negative 300 for C. I get two answers. Always disregard the negative answer. Okay, take the positive answer. So the answer then would be, considering the rounding now, is 8.91. 8.91. Okay? And like I said, look that up on YouTube or wherever you got to look it up to try and find um, a way to program that calculator because it makes it a lot easier. Okay? And uh, yeah, so that would be the time. That's the time it takes before it will actually hit the ground. And that takes care of it. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do hope this helps. Um, if it does, if you don't mind giving us a hand, like and subscribe and telling your friends. It really means the world to us. Um, we wouldn't be here uh, without you. We do appreciate you very much. And uh, we do hope that, you know, we are providing some guidance and value. Uh, hopefully making your life a little easier. I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.